All right, time to program our um, Caesar Cipher program here. So we know that it satisfies all the requirements. Let's jump into this. So the first thing that I'm going to think about is my web page itself. So for my web page, which is going to be my graphical user interface, I need to have a couple things. I'm going to have a title, which will be Caesar Cipher. Next up, I need to have um, a paragraph, and I'm going to include instructions for my user. Hey, that's part of this. Uh, to use this program, type in the phrase you would like to translate. Type in the sentence you would like to translate. Sentence you would like to encode. And the number you would like to shift by. Then press enter, and the encoded text will appear on the screen. All right, I'm just going to pop this open here, drag it over to the side here so that, okay, this is looking good. I maybe will highlight that this is my directions by putting directions there. Uh, and now what I will do is I will put maybe a paragraph that says here user input and then maybe I'll have another paragraph that says text to encode and inside of this um, we'll put an input element with type equals to text and then maybe I'll have another paragraph and I'll put um, shift by number. And then here I'll have another input element with type not text here, type number. Let's see how this is looking. Okay, so here's the text that we're going to encode and we're going to shift by this number. Okay, I haven't styled it as per normal. We'll come back to that potentially. We may not. Um, styling is going to be kind of a time sink, and I think it's best served that looking at kind of the things that we have to do here, we focus on really the HTML to create the interface, and then the JavaScript to do all of the functionality. Okay, so I actually think I have almost everything done here. We need a button, so maybe I'll put a button here, and let's call that button encode. Okay, cool. I think this looks decent. I'm not sure if you agree, but it's good enough for me. So then now we go over to our JavaScript, and even though we have all of this stuff here, maybe we start thinking about this the normal way that we think about, um, I don't know, JavaScript programs, which is to <laughs> select all of the elements on the page that I am going to be interacting with. All right, so let's see. We're going to have to select the text to encode. Let input text equal. OK, so we need to give this guy an ID, which is going to allow us to select that. So let's call him input text. I'm using camel case here. So document.querySelector. Hashtag for the ID, input text. All right, next up, we're going to need to get the shift number. Let shift number equal. All right. So here, this one, this input with type number, we'll give this an ID of shift number so that we can select that. Document dot query selector shift number. Up, oh, I have a capitalization issue there. Now it's all fixed. We're gonna need to select our button. So let the button equal document dot query selector. Notice I'm not gonna be using a hashtag here because when I select the button, there's only one button on the page. So I'm gonna select it using its element type button instead of giving it an ID. Now I do notice that I need a place to include the output. 
So let's see. Um, maybe I will put here paragraph and I'll put the text phrase output. And then here what I'll put out is your encoded string will appear here. And I'll give this paragraph an ID so that we can uh, put text inside of it. So the ID here is going to be output paragraph. All right, so I need to select this as well. Let output paragraph equal document dot query selector hashtag output paragraph. Okay, so there's something kind of like Zen about doing this because we know how to get started with the selection. Uh, we feel good about it, I think. All right, so now thinking about how this program is going to run, I know that I'm going to need to have a group of procedures, and I also know that I'm going to need to have um, a list. So let's see here. Maybe I can actually uh, create this list. So let me look up JavaScript alphabet list, uh, and I'm going to do uppercase only, uppercase alphabet list. Complicated. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to copy this part here, the uppercase part. Let alphabet equal uh, and close it off there. And now I've got the alphabet. Uh, I just wanted to save time. That's why I Googled it instead of typing it in. All right, so I do have a list. Okay, let's see what else we're gonna do here. Okay, so thinking about this, maybe the first place to start here would be to have a, I don't know, an event listener on the button. So when we use the event listener on the button, we're gonna do button dot add event listener. I'm gonna have a click event. For when somebody clicks on the button and when they click on the button it's going to run a function and the function is going to do the whole encoding thing. So let's see, I think the first thing that we need to do when we click the button is we need to get the values from here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two new variables, so I'm going to say let input text value equal, go to the input text field and take the value from it. This is something that we looked at, which is to get information from these input fields. If you use dot value, it will take the thing out of it. I'm also going to get shift number value. And we're going to say input text. Oh no, shift number value is go to the shift number field and take the value from that. So that will be here. Okay, cool. And now I actually want to make sure here that rather than program my whole procedure step-by-step step inside of this event listener, that I'm being conscious that I need to create a procedure that has a name. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna say, okay, well maybe what we'll do here is we're going to encode our string, the input, use, sorry, we're gonna encode, encode the input text value using a shift of this number, whatever number they've typed in. And I think I'm seeing how this program is going to unravel, but you may not be yet, so let me define my procedure. So this procedure is going to be the encode procedure, so function encode. I'm going to need to have a input string and an input number here. All right, so let's see. 
in order to um, work with this input string, let's split the string into a list. Uh, so what that's going to do is it's going to take a string like this carry. Oh, and you know what I'm realizing here? We may not have it be all uppercase at this point. So maybe what we should do first is we should make the string uppercase. Because I noticed that I'm only going to be using uppercase letters here. Then we're going to split the string into a list. So carry will become the list C A dot dot dot. Go through this list and convert the letters. Okay. So make the string all uppercase is easy, but maybe something that we haven't looked at. So JavaScript make string uppercase. Okay, there's this like a nice method that does it called to uppercase. So if we, uh, this is a little bit complicated, but to uppercase basically will turn it into an uppercase thing. So let's do this. Let's say let uppercase string equal take the input string and make it to uppercase using this method here string dot to uppercase the input string dot to uppercase okay next up we want to split that string into a list so let's see how do we do that let um, string list equal JavaScript split string into list and we looked at a variety of ways to do this in our last project so maybe what you would remember is hey I think I did this in hangman so I'll go to my hangman file and I'll see how we did it there because we we turn those things into list also so this is a common idea I think it was um I think it was actually just like um, array from, yeah. So string list equals upper or er, array dot from uppercase string. Let's see if I'm doing that right. Yeah, array dot from the word. Okay, and I'm starting to get a little bit ahead of myself, I feel like, so maybe I want to throw in a couple of console logs here to make sure that things are working right when I test it. So console.log uppercase string, and then maybe I'll do a console.log for my string list too to make sure that those are looking good. So in order to do this, let me first just test it down here outside of the event listener. So I'll run the encode function on my name. Oop, and I'm not going to make it uppercase to begin with. Carry. And we'll do a number of one. I don't think it's doing anything with that yet. We'll open up the console. We'll refresh it. That looks like it's working. So it's printing it all uppercase and then turning it into a string. Yes. Next up. Uh, maybe I'll comment out this part of the test here. So what we'll do now is um, test to see if the actual event listener is working. I see that I've already put the encode function there. So if I put carry and one here and press encode, it should give us the same thing. Carry R and then encode gives us C-A-R-Y space R. And that's going to be key actually. All right, so things are looking really good for us here. It looks like everything is checking out. So the next part of this is we're going to need to make a go through the string list and convert the letters. So when I think about going through this list, that reminds me that we're doing something for each of these letters. So before we go through this list to convert them, I'm thinking what we could do is we could say let output 
equal, and we'll just have an empty string there to start with. And as we go through this list of letters, we can shift each one of these and add them to our output. So to do that, we'll say string list dot for each. And as we go through this list, you might think I should call each of these a letter, and that would probably work. I'm going to call it a character, though, because I notice that sometimes we don't have letters for characters. So take the string list, and for each character in that list, draw an arrow, and then this is what we're going to do. Let's see. So how can we tell it's a letter? The way we can tell that it's a letter is we could say if the if the string sorry if the letter is in alphabet and I think that like that also reminds me of hangman a little bit when we were checking to see if the letters were in the word so I'm going to go down here and I'm going to see some of the if statements it looks like includes might be really useful here so if alphabet, if this list includes the current character, then that will mean we have a letter. And if we have a letter, it means that we are going to shift it. If we don't have a letter, then what we're going to be doing is pretty simple. We're just going to be adding, so for example, when we have a space here, or if we had an exclamation point here, these aren't shiftable, the space and the exclamation point. So we're just going to take whatever that character is, and we're going to add it to our output. So we'll do output equals the old output plus the current character. Now, if it's a letter, if it's in this alphabet list, then, ooh, sorry, if it's in this alphabet list, then what we're going to do is we have to shift it. So let's think about shifting it. What would shifting it mean to do? Hmm, this is actually pretty tough. So let's see, how will the computer know to shift these things? And where to shift them to? So if it's in this list, then maybe what we could do is we could get the current location of this character. So C is at position 0, 1, 2. And if we're shifting it by 1, we want to go from position 2 to position 3. If we're shifting it by 3, we would go from position 2 to position 3, 4, 5. Hmm. It looks like we need the index where we're currently at. So what we could do is we could say let current index equal go into the alphabet string. JavaScript, how to get index of an element in an array. I know these methods uh, that I'm Googling for the most part today, but I wanted to show you kind of how you might approach these if you didn't. So, okay, beast.index of would come up with one because the index of bison is at one. Sweet. Okay, so the current index is go into the alphabet list and get the index of the letter that we're currently on, which is character. Let shifted index, sorry, one word, shifted index equal, take the current index and add however much we're shifting by, which I believe is our input number. Let shifted character equal, oops, sorry, back here, I'm just adding in the semicolon. Let shifted character equal, go into the alphabet list, and instead of taking, you know, the position that we got before, the current index, we're going to take whichever letter is at the shifted index. So since the current index here, like for C, would be 2. If we add 3, it would give us 5 for the index, uh, and that would give us F. So let shifted character equal alphabet 
the item at the shifted index. And then what we're going to do through this is we're going to do output equals the old value of output, output, which is starting as an empty string, and we're going to add to that whatever the shifted character is. This is a little bit incorrect, actually. Uh, so let's see why it's incorrect in a second. But before we do this, Maybe what we could do is after going through this whole for each loop, we could log to the console our output value so we could see what it's going to look like. So let me put in some text here, carry r, and we'll shift it by 1. V undefined, <laughs> oh gosh, let's see. <laughs> oh man. I totally messed something up, didn't I? Okay, so it's undefined, undefined, undefined. So it's doing it wrong for these. So let's see. Current index is that. Let's print out the current index. So console.log current index. Two zero seventeen twenty four seventeen. That looks good. Shifted index is equal to the current index plus the input number. So let's do this console dot log shifted index. I think this is where we're going to have our problem. All right, I can see what the problem is here. It's adding them like strings. So it's doing that. I'm surprised that it's doing that. Why is it doing it like that? So instead of doing it's doing 2 plus 1 to give us 21 here instead of 2 plus 1 to give us 3. Okay, so uh, I'm going to make sure that these are numbers by doing number to each of them, which will convert this to a number and this to a number. I'm not sure why it wasn't automatically doing that. Okay, cool. So now it's actually working fine. It's taking these and shifting it. So I'm actually going to delete, no I'm not, uh, I'm going to just bring this a little bit larger. So you can see that it takes carry, C shifts 1 to D, A shifts 1 to B, R shifts 1 to S, Y shifts 1 to Z. The space stays the same and if we put an exclamation point here that will stay the same too. So carry and then the exclamation point because it's not a character does this, R shifts to S, that looks good. So putting it all together here, let's see, what's the error? So I actually was able to avoid the error, and maybe you can see where things are going to be really bad here. What if we take the letter Z and we try to shift it by, or let's just do two letters. We'll do A and Z and we'll shift it by one. So A ends up okay, A shifts to B, but then Z shifts to undefined. And the reason why Z is shifting to undefined is because in the alphabet, there aren't 26 positions. Z is at the last position. So if we add one to the index of Z, we're no longer in the array. So what we have to do here, maybe there's a couple of ways to handle this, which is if our shifted index is greater than or equal to 26, then what we really want to do is we want to make our shifted index loop back around. So 26 should actually shift back to the start, which is zero. If we went two ahead, that would put us at 27. 27 should shift back to one. So let me record this. 26 should shift back to position zero. We should be back at A. 27 should shift to position 1, 28 should shift back to position 2, because if we add 
2 to z, we really want to get, oh sorry, if we add 3 to z, we really want to get c. So what it looks like to me is if we end up past the array, then we're going to subtract 26 off to bring it back into the array like this. So shifted index is equal to shifted index minus 26. Let's see if this works. So now a shifts to from 0 to 1, z will shift from 25 not to 26, but it will loop back around to position 0, which is a. All right, so I think we've fixed that. The last part of this is to get our output to appear on the screen. So this function here, it does do a good job of encoding all of the information in the string. What we're going to do lastly here is instead of just console logging it, let's return out the output. So what we can do there is we can say output is equal to this. And then what we can do here next is we can say take this output and put it as the text on the screen here. So we could say output dot, oh no, not output, sorry. Let's see what it's called. Output paragraph. Go into that output paragraph and make the inner HTML of that equal to the output information. And because, sorry, let me just let me know that. Because we're returning the output here, it means that when we run this function in code, what will pop out is this output encoded string. So let's see if it works. So we get BA there. Carry is a computer exclamation point. Exclamation point. Cool. So this looks pretty complete to me. Uh, and I think this code satisfies all of the things that we need to do in our create task. So in a future video, we can actually go through this. I think I will go through this and I'll try to answer these questions to make sure that, that it actually does. But we can see briefly that we used a couple of different lists, alphabet, and then our string list, which we created a list from the string that we were putting in, in order to facilitate kind of making this a little bit easier. And we can also see that having this procedure to encode is called here, uh, and it's named here, and created here, and it has multiple parameters, um, and it involves sequencing, the order of these steps matters, selection, it has an if-else statement, where depending on what type of thing it's reading, it will do different things, and it also has iteration, because we're iterating, looping through this list, and doing the same thing for each character.